Oh, hi. Welcome back to Tiny Apartment Gardening, where I show you how I garden in a tiny apartment. And today I'm showing you how I built my worm farm. Now, there are multiple different ways to do this, including buy one. Typically, they are at least 100 euros, and I do not have the space for that, and I don't want to spend that much money. So, um, making my own. And what I did was use two 45 liter containers from Ikea, just plastic containers, which is 12 gallons. Um, now, one thing, mine are clear. You will probably not want to do that. It's okay that I'm doing it because I'm keeping mine under the sink. Worms hate light, so they will not be happy if you have clear containers left out or outside. Not a good idea. If you're keeping them under the sink or in a cabinet like I am, you can use clear. Um, so that's one thing to consider. Now, I actually only ordered 100 grams of worms. That is a, a slightly under 4 ounces. That's nothing. 45 liters or or um, 12 gallons is quite a lot for that amount of worms. However, if you keep them in the right conditions and you have happy worms, they double their colony size in about two months. So you can start really small and buy more containers as you need to. I figured that for me, I would just rather buy the bigger container, get a small amount of worms, and they'll grow into it. So that is what I'm doing. You don't have to. Um, to set up the habitat first, you want to take your container and you can use a Rubbermaid container, an Ikea container, really whatever. And you're just going to drill holes into the sides because for some reason, living things need oxygen to survive. I know, right? Weird. So you're going to go ahead and just drill and do that all the way around the top so they have oxygen. Um, and you want to do that on the lid too. I actually already did, so I'm gonna go ahead and show you what that looks like. Um, just stacking them on top of each other. Oh, I'm also drilling holes into the bottom. This is dirty because I already made it, but drilling holes into the bottom so that the water leaks out from the top of the worm farm and then the worm urine and all of that, which is good for your soil, goes into the bottom then you can put it into something to spray or water your plants with. So that's what I'm doing. And then also getting the combos from the top, of course, and all of that. But yeah, method I'm going with. So um, to fill your worm farm, I recommend either peat moss or coconut fiber uh, because the pH balance, you, you don't want to just go get soil from outside. It's not a good idea. You will not have happy worms in most cases. Um, if you do peat moss, you want to add eggshells because it's kind of acidic and that will help balance it out. I went with coconut fiber, mostly because it's really fun to watch it expand. This was about this big, you add in water and it goes up. I wish I had that on video, but I do not. So coconut fiber and then you just pour it into your container. So this is what my finished product looks like. <clears throat> kind of heavy um, but with the holes I think you can see those on the camera now you don't really have to worry about the holes being too big or too small or anything like that because if your conditions are right inside of the worm farm there is no reason for the worms to want to escape and they won't try if you have really bad conditions you might wake up and have worms trying to get out all over and that could be a hassle Unless you're filming, like, you know, your own version of an Indiana Jones movie with miniatures and there are just, like, worms. Then you can try it, but, you know, not what I'm going for. So, peat moss or coconut fiber, the coconut fiber. Now, now that it's set up like this, I'm just going to add the food on top and the bedding. Um, once I get the worms. Sorry, that's, that's a lot of coconut fiber. I might have actually added too much, but I can go through and check. So it's 30 liters, which is a lot, but I just use this brand, but it's Dutch. So if you don't happen to live in the Netherlands, you probably won't go with that. It doesn't really matter what kind you get, just that you make sure peat moss or coconut fiber. Or if you're using something else, do your research on it. So that is what I'm doing. As far as feeding the worms, 
You can use leftover scraps from your kitchen, um, pretty much anything. I have some eggshells, some corn husks, because I made tamales. Not typically going to be something I've laying around. They love coffee grounds, so a lot of coffee grounds, and some blended up veggies. Now, things you want to avoid feeding them are things like onions and broccoli and things like that. They, they don't really like it, and if you have too much of it, then they'll try to get out of their container. So, And you don't want to overfeed them. You want to feed them about half the size of the worms if you want the population to grow. So you're not having too much food in there that they're not able to eat and it rotting. Um, and then after you add the food, you cover it with newspaper. So my worms are not here yet. I will make another video when I get them. I am not putting the food in yet um, or the newspaper or anything like that because as soon as I get them, I'm gonna leave them in the, in the soil to kind of get, or coconut fiber, to kind of get comfortable and settle down in their surroundings and then I'll add all of that. So I'll make another video about that, but I wanted to show you how I set it up and finished product. So yeah. So thanks for watching. Bye.